What people who are watching this program are seeing is a new story in the making in which information shifts back and forth, numbers of survivors, numbers of casualties, etc., shift back and forth, and we really have no terribly hard information here and the confusion of the moment that appears on television is the confusion of the moment at John F Kennedy and also here in our studios Chuck did you want to add yes. something? I, no I was just thinking about what the fellow said we have we have an eyewitness now who was on the aircraft a survivor who talked about that and said the aircraft seemed very low according to Tony and the wing the one wing dipped and hit and uh, these accounts are going to be very critical in determining what actually happened whether it was a gust of wind that tipped the plane over at a crucial moment during the flight or just exactly what happened uh, Tom, we just got this in. As we were discussing it earlier, we said we didn't see how that the lightning could affect control surfaces on the aircraft or whatever have you enough to cause a crash. Normally it travels through the skin. Uh, Mr. John Beerchuk called us. He says he's with Grumman and he's done a paper on the effects of lightning striking aircraft. And it hasn't been a problem until recently, until they've gone to more sophisticated flight control systems where you have computers that uh, actually synthesize the information necessary to make an, an instrument approach and put it on one big display there, you see. So the pilot is watching a computer, really a computer readout, mechanically done, while he's flying down on instrument approaches. Uh, Beerchuk says that it is possible for lightning when striking an aircraft to knock out the computer. If so, this instrument, the primary uh, landing instrument he's using at the time, would, uh, would go haywire. And if, uh, when he's that low, and as we saw in the picture, he was lined up with the runway. You saw the approach mm -hmm. lights to the runway, mm -hmm. the little flashing strobes. So he was right on target there. If at that last moment something happened to cause his flight director to go haywire, uh, just a split second would all be all it take. One other element that we talked about a moment ago was that uh, we had an eyewitness on the scene who said that several of the uh, uh, light, the approach lights were, were clipped. Not the off, yeah. Uh, it could well have been that the flash that the eyewitness saw, the police officer, the flash he saw that he assumed was lightning hitting the plane could have been a flash caused by the plane striking one of those towers with the, uh, with the strobes on it. So there, there are more questions, obviously, than answers right now, Tom, and it's, uh, as you said, and we've said many times, it's going to take a thorough investigation here. There is one other element in this uh, about the, the survivor uh, who is a flight attendant. I think we have two of the survivors who were flight attendants. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two seats in the rear of the airplane. They're called jump seats in the 727s, and they are the only seats in the aircraft, aside from the, the flight crew on the flight deck up front, that have shoulder straps. And uh, I am making a presumption, but I would assume that these two seats with these two uh, passengers in them who were the flight attendants uh, probably contributed to their survival.